Glory to Jesus Christ. Did you hear the readings talking about angels this morning? Reminding us that angels are ministering spirits sent to serve those who are to inherit salvation. That's you and me. We are all called to inherit the great gift of salvation. And the angels are our normally invisible helpers on that journey. You know, um, we often think of angels as figments of the imagination. Or little boys, chubby little boys with wings. Um, And we forget that angels are very, very powerful beings sent for the sake of those who to our inherit salvation. So here is a story of an encounter with an angel. And I wish to goodness I still had chapter and verse on this story because it's quite magnificent. But apparently, and this is a true story, one night a girl is walking home by herself and this creepy looking guy starts following her. So she walks a little bit faster and, you know, she crosses over to the side of the street and then the guy crosses over. This guy is definitely following. So she starts praying, Jesus, help me. Guardian angel, help me. Jesus, help me. And she makes it home okay. But shortly afterwards, she hears that another girl was attacked on the same street and on the same night. And she, she spoke to the police and eventually she ended up as part of the trial who, of this guy who was convicted of this rape. And they asked this guy, um, how come you attacked um, the person you did and this other girl you left alone? And he said, well, she wasn't on her own. Why would I attack somebody who's walking down the street with two big black guys? Two big black military dudes walking down the street with her seven foot tall. That's a guardian angel when you need it most. She was on her own. She couldn't see the two seven foot tall big black military dudes walking down the street with her. But that's a guardian angel. Not a fluffy little boy with wings. Big military angels when we need them. Sent. Ministering spirits sent to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation. I'll tell you another story that amazed me recently is... Um, there was a man who loved to pray while his wife was in the salon. So while his wife was in the salon, he decided he was going to walk around the mall and pray. And so uh, the whole hour or so she was in there, he walked all around the mall and prayed outside all of the stores and prayed for all the people. And as he was waiting for his wife, who was ready to collect his wife, this... um, And I think also an African-American person came up to him and said, my friend, I am the angel that God has appointed over this mall. And I want to thank you so much for your prayers today. And the guy was like, he didn't know what to say. And the guy had disappeared and he turned around to look for him. And there was nowhere for this guy to have gone that he wouldn't have been able to see him. I am the angel who was set over this mall. And I want to thank you today for your prayers. Wow, I wish I had an experience like that. But it may make you trust that the ministering spirits are sent to serve us who are called to inherit salvation. So the letter to the Hebrews tells us, therefore we must attend all the more. In other words, pay closer attention to what we have heard so that we may not be carried away or drift away from it. For how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? We have this wonderful inheritance waiting for us. And we forget that it's real. 
All too often, I think, not only do we forget that angels are real, we forget that he is real. We forget that he knows us, that he knows you and me. He knows the circumstances of our daily lives. And he is with us to the end of the world, just as he promised. He is with us. And yet we drift away from him because we forget that he's real. We forget what we heard. Now, the book of Hebrews was written for Christians in very difficult times. It was written to Christians who were persecuted because they had embraced Christianity and so were persecuted by the Hebrews. And so often had to, they'd lost their possessions, lost their homes. They'd literally fled to the hills and to the catacombs to take refuge. So if you yourself are having a hard time, you might get something out of reading through the book of Hebrews. And I think the church knows that we all have a hard time during the great fast. And that's why it gives us the book of Hebrews to read during these hard times. So dip into it. Don't let yourself drift away. Last week, the reading told us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. You keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, you won't drift away. And the Hebrews letter to them tells us, let us hold unswaveringly to our confession that gives us hope, to our faith that gives, on, gives us hope. Hold tightly to that and you won't drift anywhere. He says we must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. And we should not stay away from our assembly, from our church, as is the custom of some. True enough in our day as well. But rather we should encourage one another and this all the more as you see God's day drawing near. So not only do we have to hold on tightly to our faith, to what we have heard about God. We have to help each other do the same thing. We have to encourage one another. We have to encourage one another to love and good works. And we have to meet together. You see, it's, you won't drift straight away if you decide not to come to church next weekend. You'll probably be quite all right if you decide not to come to church next weekend. But if you stay away, it will become easier and easier and easier to slowly neglect your faith, to slowly neglect your prayer. And, you know, you might be okay, so to speak, in your boat, drifting along in the sea. But what happens when the storm comes? What happens when the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy? You might suddenly feel a long way from the good shepherd who came to bring you life and bring you life abundantly. So don't drift away. The only thing you have to do to drift away is nothing. So don't do nothing. Keep hold of what you have heard. So what have you heard? You've heard that the salvation, the inheritance of salvation is real. You've heard that that you have a good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. That's how much he cares for you. That's how interested he is in your welfare. And if there's any stealing, killing and destroying going on, know where it comes from. It doesn't come from your good shepherd who laid down his life for you. That's for sure. What was it you heard that first awoken faith for you? What was it? Did somebody say something? Was it a priest or a preacher? What was it that woke you up to faith, to the reality of God in your life? Well, whatever it was, hold on to that. Pay all the closer attention to what you have heard. The letter of the Hebrews reminds us. Hold on to that. And for me, I think one of the most inspiring things was that when I was in my first year at college, a priest said, if you want to know what God's love for you is like, think of the best human being that you know. Someone who has been genuinely good to you. Someone who has shown you unconditional love. Think about a person like that. And I immediately thought of my history teacher, whose name was Mr. Hurst. 
Now, to put Mr. Hurst in context, I have to tell you the story of a different history teacher the year before. He was quite horrible. Nasty guy, and he would pace around the classroom like this. Without warning, he'd be in your face. Or he'd be yelling at somebody. Or saying, somebody is going to be wondering why we are in detention for all next week. Because they are not looking at me and they are talking to their friends. And if you didn't do Christine work, you had this guy in your face literally yelling at you. It was horrible. However, the next year, we had Mr. Hurst. And he was the head of the history department, almost ready to retire. And a kinder, more grandfatherly teacher you've never met. And he was wonderful. Kids knew that he loved them. And every so often, and in nearly every class, he would uh, just pick up somebody's work at random and say, look at the beautiful work that Lucy has done this week. Look how much effort Lucy has put into her work. She got 6 out of 10 on the quiz. That's okay, she tried hard. 6 out of 10 is a respectable score. But look how neatly it's laid out. Look at her beautiful handwriting. Look. Look what effort she's putting to her work. Lucy, you should be very, very proud of yourself. And Lucy's, you know, like turning bright pink, but Lucy knew she was respected. And so did every other kid in that class. And everybody did the same pristine work. Everybody did the very, very best work for Mr. Hurst because they wanted to. Not because they were going to get yelled and screamed at, but because they wanted to and because they knew that he loved them and that he respected them. So when I wonder what God is like, I think of Mr. Hurst. And the priest's advice was this. God has to be better than even the best human being that you have ever met. Because the best human being is just that. It's just a human being. So the goodness of God, the goodness of the good shepherd has to be even more wonderful, far more amazing than the best people that have shown us goodness and love. And so may Mr. Hurst indeed rest in peace this morning. And we give thanks to God for him and all those people that have shown us something about what God is like. Saint Gregory Palamas was an archbishop who also spoke about angels Because he taught the church many important things about mystical theology. Now I don't pretend to understand all of them or indeed most of them. But what St. Gregory's um, mystical system which is called hesychasm teaches us. Is that in a nutshell it really is possible for ordinary human beings to directly experience God. To experience the goodness The energy, if we're to use the word, of God directly. And hesychasm can be summed up in this um, quotation from a different saint, Saint Simeon, the new theologian, who was also a great hesychast. But he summarizes the teaching like this, and it's quite wonderful. He says, Do not say it is impossible to receive the Holy Spirit. Do not say God does not appear to us. Do not say people do not see the divine light or else it's impossible in these present times. This is a thing never impossible, my friends, but on the contrary, altogether possible for those who wish. And whether it's angels, whether it's someone saying something to you that you know is an encouragement from God, whether it's just that moment of prayer When all of a sudden you know that it's going to be okay. You know that God's listening to you. The Holy Spirit, the goodness of God, can reach any of us at any time with whatever help we need. I remember a friend of mine in seminary. His name was Simon. And we had a visiting priest who was a wonderful holy man who had a ministry of healing. His name was Father Jimmy Collins. And his priesthood had quite simply been 40 years as pastor in the roughest part of Liverpool, England, a place called Kirby. 
And he'd been the parish priest in Kirby for 40 years. But all of a sudden, people noticed that when Father Jimmy prays for them, their sicknesses went away. And so by the end of his life, Father Jimmy was having healing masses in the cathedral at Liverpool every month. And the only time that that cathedral was ever packed was when Father Jimmy Collins' funeral happened and when Pope St. John Paul II visited. Those are the only two times that that cathedral has ever been standing room only. That's how amazing Father Jimmy was. But anyway, my friend Simon in seminary, Father Jimmy came to visit the seminary, and he was hearing confessions. So my friend Simon went to confession, and he came back. He's like, Adam, I've got to talk to you. I've got to talk to you. So we went, I'm like, okay, okay. We went outside. I'm like, what's the matter? He's like, how does he know my name? I've never met him before. I walk in there, he says to me, Simon, Simon, you're worried about this, this, and this. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm really worried about this, this, and this. And this priest said to me, Simon, God doesn't want you to worry about this, this, and this. God wants you to worry about this and that. And it was absolutely perfect. He said it was like speaking to Jesus. He knew, he knew my name. He knew the three things that I was worrying about. And he gave me the answers. It's all real. It's all real. So whatever the stories that you have heard that remind you that your salvation, your inheritance is all real, pay close attention to it. And you won't drift. And remember that the good shepherd laid down his life for you and for me. Glory to Jesus Christ.